It's now 2024, and welcome back to another episode of Does This Build Carry? We're attempting the Moon Battleground Grandmaster this week, and let's see what two lucky guardians we get to take with us on this journey, and see exactly what they're running to know what we can expect from them in this Grandmaster. So our first guardian is Laxbro, and he's running a Stormcaller Warlock with Fallen Sunstar. He has 100 Resilience, 100 Discipline, which is great, almost 80 Recovery, and is also running Cold Heart to play into those Ionic Traces. Let's see if he has the correct subclass setup. So he's running Arc Soul and Electrostatic Mind, which is great. He has Pulse Grenade on, Healing Rift, and Chaos Reach, all good choices. Spark of Beacons, Spark of Shock, so his grenades jolt targets, Spark of Ions, and Spark of Brilliance. So not a too bad overall arc setup for him on his Warlock. I will say I think he's going to struggle in this Grandmaster this week. I bet he doesn't get very many kills with this setup. Now we'll actually have to see what happens in the Grandmaster, but that's just my opinion based off what I see going on. Our second Guardian is Ice. Let's see what he's running here. Okay, a Golden Gun Nighthawk build. You pretty much see one of these in every Grandmaster these days. 100 Resilience, 100 Discipline. He's running it with Polaris Lance, which again, you're going to see that a lot. Knock him down and on your mark, along with a Healing Grenade, Knife Trick, and Golden Gun. For his fragments, he has Ember of Ashes, Ember of Char, Ember of Eruption, Ember of Torches, and Ember of Solace. So overall, a good Solar Hunter build. Since he is running Polaris Lance, I expect him to get a lot of kills, and he should be up there in kills and also in score, because he should be defeating champions and high health targets with his Golden Gun. So I expect Ice to be close to the same level as me when this Grandmaster ends, and we're definitely going to have to help out Laxbro here. But let's see how it goes. Now for my particular build today, we are running the Solar Warlock. Our main weapon we're taking advantage of is Tommy's Matchbook. Polaris Lance is still a good choice here. Also Hierarchy of Needs is a great choice as well, the Solar Bow. But I really like Tommy's Matchbook because of the damage output, and you're going to see why that plays into this build so strongly. With the Catalyst of Tommy's Matchbook, you Scorch when you get the Ignition Trigger procced, and they change this a season or two back to deal less damage to you and it can't kill you anymore either when you're burning so now a restoration times one keeps you alive with tommy's matchbook so if you use something like precious scars on a tie-in it's really fun in our primary we're using scatter signal this is to apply the unravel debuff the slice debuff and to create threadlings two of which come from the artifact and Slice comes from the weapon itself, and then on our Heavy and Apex Predator with Reconstruction and Explosive Light. Now for our subclass, we have a Heat Rises and Touch of Flame. Touch of Flame to give us Restoration times 2, Heat Rises to give us Melee Energy when we kill something when we do a little Bunny Hop. We take the Healing Grenade for Restoration times 2, Incinerator Snap, Healing Rift, and Well of Radiance. For our first Fragment, we take Ember of Ashes, this allows Tommy's matchbook to ignite things much quicker. Next, we take Ember of Benevolence. This is an infinite 400% regen on all our abilities, and we proc this by applying Restoration to our fire team. This is done through our Healing Rift, which is considered Restoration times one. It's also done through our Healing Grenade and through our Well of Radiance. So three different ways to proc this, so you should have this up all the time. Next, we take Ember of Empyrean. This just allows our Tommy's matchbook or our rocket launcher to chain Restoration and Radiant for us. This isn't as important, but an easier content it's just a great quality of life to have. And then we take Ember of Singeing. Your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. Since Tommy's matchbook intrinsically scorches targets, this is a 300% regen on our class ability, plus you have Benevolence on top of that giving you 400%. So you should have your class ability up all the time, which is key to keeping you alive with Tommy's matchbook. And then you add in the Healing Grenade for extra survivability and the Well. We take 100 Resilience with this build, 100 Discipline, and we even got 70 Recovery. And then for our Exotic, we take Phoenix Protocol. Kills and assists you make while standing in your Well of Radiance returns super energy. This caps at 50%, but you get that 50% back so quickly, which means our other 50% needs to come from damage dealt. The best way to do this is with an exotic primary weapon that outputs a lot of damage, like something like Wish Ender. But since we're playing into solar, we take Tommy's Matchbook that also does put out a ton of damage. We take Heavy Ammo Finder and two Harmonic Siphon for Orbs of Power, Impact Induction, and Focusing Strike, so our melee gives us Grenade and Class Ability Energy. Your chest piece is your damage resistance, and your boots is triple solar weapon surge for a 22% weapon damage bonus all the time on that Tommy's matchbook. And then on our class item, we take time dilation to extend that duration and reaper to spawn an orb of power. For the artifact mods, really the only important ones here is horde shuttle and unraveling orbs. This allows our strand fusion rifle to apply these debuffs for us. And then we also do take flint striker so we can become radiant with rapid precision hits from our solar weapon, which is Tommy's matchbook. That's how we get Radiant within the build. Now to handle champions, barrier, and unstoppable this week, well, Radiant handles barrier champions, and Ignitions handle unstoppable champions. Well, our Tommy's matchbook handles both of these, with Radiant stunning barrier and the Scorch triggering Ignitions to stun unstoppables. So you just hold down the trigger in that Well of Radiance, in your Healing Rift, or when you have Restoration from your grenade. 
Now our entire goal with this build is to spam as many Well of Radiances as possible. This is to keep both our teammates alive, it allows us to do damage, and it just makes things easy in a Grandmaster when you don't know what the other two members of your fire team are doing. So Phoenix Protocol gives us that 50% of our super back instantly pretty much, and you have a good 10 to 15 seconds of your Well of Radiance still left to build the other 50%. So that's why Tommy's matchbook is so good, because it is an exotic primary, so it gets the damage buff to red bar enemies, it outputs great damage, and with three solar weapon surges, it adds even more outgoing damage. So that builds a good 25% of your super before Well of Radiance ends. So when Well of Radiance is done, you should have about 75% of that super ready to go, which means you just need to get 25% back after that. With your double solar siphons on your helmet, you should be creating a ton of orbs of power with the build. As you guys saw in the results, I ended with over 100 orbs of power created, I believe, and you just go pick up those orbs of power and hopefully your teammates have created orbs of power by using their super because every time you drop that well of radiance you are creating three big orbs of power to feed your other teammates supers and vice versa like the golden gun hunter should be popping his super pretty often if he's getting three big orbs from you now when you don't have that well of radiance for that 25 percent which literally is going to be like 30 seconds of your gameplay between dropping well of radiances i believe i dropped over 20 wells in this grandmaster you start off by using your healing rift and this applies that restoration to you to just hold down the trigger of Tommy's matchbook. Since Tommy's is intrinsically scorching targets, your class ability will have a 300% increase in recharge all the time. So technically you should get your healing rift back before it's ran out as long as you're shooting enemies. But just in case you don't, that's where Ember of Benevolence comes in and your two teammates just have to step in your rift one time to proc that six seconds of 400% regen to your rift. And that's not including if you use your healing grenade. And the way I like to use my restoration times two healing grenade is just doing my finger snap and then throwing the healing grenade on the ground or throwing the healing grenade first and then snapping. If you get a good snap off on enemies, it's gonna cause an ignition and probably kill a lot of red bar enemies, which just instantly procs Ember of Empyrean to shoot your restoration times two all the way up. And then of course you still have Ember of Benevolence if your grenade did tag somebody else on your fire team and procking more regen. And the biggest thing I can tell you is as soon as you get your well, just drop it. You're going to have it back so often that you might as well just use it. Because if you're holding on to those supers and grandmasters, you're just making your life much harder and much more difficult. Keep dropping your well the moment you guys get it. And you golden gun hunters, I've seen too many of you guys holding on to that as well. So start using your golden guns more often than not. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to making a ton of Destiny 2 builds throughout the year of 2024 with you all and thank you so much for watching my content and always sticking around and supporting the channel you guys have no idea how much it means to me and you truly have changed my life if you still are watching at this moment thank you so much